Hello, I'm Bruce Leno. Welcome to Verification Corner. In this episode, I'm going to show you the Chunker demo, which is a, a fun little demo that exhibits a number of specification features. I'm going to use the SpecSharp system, but the, the features like pre and post conditions and object invariants are ones that apply to other systems as well. Let's go. All right, here we are. So I'm showing you Visual Studio, and I have put it into the SpecSharp mode, so I can uh, demo the, the program in SpecSharp. OK, so I'm going to write a class that we'll call Chunker. Chunker is going to uh, keep track of a string, a source string, and it's going to carve this string up into various chunks. I'll keep track of the size that I'm going to carve them up into uh, in the field that I'll call chunk size. I'll also keep track of here how many characters we've returned so far. Um, this is so that we don't return the same, the same substrings of the, of the given source string. Okay, so for, um, for the class I need a constructor, which is rather boring, but let me just write it. Uh, so the chunker constructor is going to take a source string, it's going to take uh, some given chunk size, and simply what it will do is it will record those into, into the fields. Uh, the end field, I could do that, I could initialize it manually or it will otherwise also get initialized to zero uh, at the beginning of the constructor as usual. Okay, boring stuff so far, but now comes the interesting part where I get to write the, the next chunk method. Uh, so next chunk uh, gives me the first opportunity here to, to show you a feature that is in SpecSharp um, which includes specifications, uh, which goes beyond the, the features that you would just see in, for example, C Sharp. And that is that I can associate a post condition with the method. The post condition is introduced by the ensures keyword. And I'm going to say here that I'm going to ensure that this method, that the result of the method has some length, which is going to be equal to chunk size. So I can write that specification even if I don't have the code here. Uh, and then I can start writing the code if I'd like, or I can do, do them in the other order, of course, too. Okay, this method, roughly speaking, is going to uh, carve off a part of the, of the source string. So I'll do a substring of it. Um, I'll skip the first n characters, because we've returned those already. And I will take the next chunk size characters, and I will return that substring s. But before doing so, I will also increment the um, the number of characters that we have returned so far, which is which we store in n. Okay, now something interesting happens. We get the squiggly line here under the call to substring, and what it's complaining about uh, is the verifier that's complaining. That is, the compiler and type checker are, are happy, and at this point, it's the, it's the verifier that's complaining. And the complaint is that we're not satisfying the precondition of substring. Now, like all um, methods in, in an API, there, there are some conditions under which um, that you must ensure that you're um, th of, of the current state when you're calling it, and that's called the precondition. So here it says that we're violating one of them. So let me just show you the whole spec, which I can bring up by Control K, Control I. Um, this is the, the usual hover text that you get for, for a method, but in this case, since we're getting an error for the message, I have to use the key combination to bring it up. What we see here is not just the description of the method, but we also see three preconditions and the post condition. The three preconditions are denoted by the requires keyword and the ensures condition with the ensures keyword. So we can see what kind of specification substring has. Now, something that you might notice here is that the post condition of the substring method, as I'm showing you here, is simply something about the length of its result. Certainly, we would want to know more things about substring than the length of its result. We want to know that it, that it really is the, the appropriate substring that, that we want. But that's not part of this specification. So when you use specifications in practice, you can choose the level at which, you've, uh, at which you want to specify things. So in this case, it's, um, it's a rather light specification that's been used for the post condition. OK, let's see what, um, uh, what we can do about the, the precondition error that we're getting. Well, it's complaining that start index, which you can see is the first parameter of the substring, uh, start index has to be at least zero, and it's complaining that it might not be. So why might that be? Well, um, it's the, um, 
what we're passing in as, as, the, as the start index is n. And we certainly intend for n to be at least 0. Um, it's the number of characters returned so far, after all. So what we can do in spec sharp is we can, we can associate an invariant with this. So instead of saying that just that the type of the variable is an integer, uh, we can say something more about the values. So the value we're going to say is it's going to be at least 0. So by doing that, we, we get rid of the, uh, of the complaint about the precondition. Uh, we get now another complaint that is quite similar, but it's complaining that the other parameter, the length parameter, also has to be at least 0. So we can apply the same trick here. Let me write an invariant. It doesn't matter where I write the invariant. It's like a class member, but it makes sense to put it close to the fields that I'm specifying something about. Now, let me just point out something here. I wrote that chunk size should be at least 0. That might be all that, that I want. But perhaps in some cases, uh, in some implementations, maybe I would like to say that it's actually strictly positive. The good thing with specifications is that, is that you can say whatever the condition happens to be. So it could be either strictly uh, positive or at least 0, uh, or maybe some other more complicated condition that says, uh, that says what the value of chunk size is. Let me go with this one for this, uh, for this demo. OK, let's look down here at the, at the, post, at the constructor. Now we're getting a complaint. The complaint says that the object invariant, the one that, that we just introduced, might not hold at this point. Um, and why is that? Well, it's because the chunk size field is initialized from the chunk size parameter. And we don't know anything about the chunk size parameter other than that it is an integer, as, uh, as its type says. So what can we do? Well, we could do some, in some defensive programming. That is, we could surround the body of the constructor with something that tests to see if chunk size is negative or, or not. But a better, a better way to solve this particular problem is, is to give this responsibility to the callers of the, chunk, of the chunker constructor. That is, we don't want anyone to call the chunker constructor with a negative value. So to do that, I introduce a precondition. The precondition says that the chunk size uh, parameter should be at least 0. And with that, we know, then know that the, the value that goes into the field is at least 0, so I no longer get a complaint here about the, about the invariant. So the invariant is supposed to hold at the end of the constructor, and we also check it uh, on updates of fields. OK, let's go back to the call to substring. Now we've managed to get through two of the preconditions. Uh, so we have to work hard when, when we're using specifications, because it's going to check that we're always doing things right. So the third precondition that, that we're now getting a complaint about is the precondition that says that the start index plus the length must not exceed the length of the string that we're operating on. In other words, n plus the chunk size should not be greater than the length of, of SRC. But in fact, that might be the case here. If someone keeps calling next chunk uh, repeatedly, we're eventually going to run out of, uh, out of string. So this is no good. So this code um, has some problems. We could now consider introducing another precondition, which would say something about to the caller about the size of n and chunk size. And maybe that's what we want to do. But for this demo, let me do something different. Let's just uh, instead introduce an if statement. So what the if statement is going to do is it's going to check to see if we have run out of string yet. So if n plus chunk size is still within the length of the, of the source string, then I will do the assignment that we previously had. Otherwise, I will do something different. And I propose that I will do a, use a different overload of substring, one that simply takes a start index and goes to the end of the string. So that's what I will do at this point. OK, so what you can see now is that we now get no more complaints about that first call to substring, which means that, that we pass all of its three preconditions. But we do get the complaint now instead about the second call to substring, the new one that I introduced. So it has the precondition that says that the start index must not exceed the length of the string. And in fact, we have a problem here. The problem is highlighted a little bit, bit more by this little underscore here, which shows us that, it's the, that the trace position it goes through the, the, the else branch, which is in this case is pretty obvious since the, the problem statement sits in the, in the else branch. OK, so what can we do about this uh, condition? Well, we intend for n never to exceed the, the length of the, of the source string. After all, we set up here that n is supposed to be the number of characters returned so far. So what we will simply do is, is we will write something stronger about the invariant uh, to say that n could be as small as 0 and it could be as large as the length of the, the entire string. 
Now, these invariants that I've written here, we came to by, we were prompted more or less by, by errors that the, that the verifier reports to us. But once you get a little bit used to using specifications, you would immediately think about when you introduce the chunk size field that it's going to be at least zero. So you would write down that invariant. And immediately when you write down n, you would probably make a design decision about what is the, the range going to be for n. And in this case, we're going to allow it to be in this range. OK, so with that additional, um, with that additional precondition, uh, with that additional invariant, we're able to get past the, the precondition of the second call to substring. But now let's see what happens. Now we're getting a complaint about the assignment to n. Here we're updating n to increase it by chunk size. And it says that it may break the invariant, in fact, the invariant that we just introduced, that n is at most the length of the, of the source string here. OK, why is that? We get SR help, again, the little squiggly that tells us that we took the else branch to get to this error. That doesn't mean that there aren't other ways to get to the error necessarily, but it tells us that that is, that is one way to get to the error. So again, if we took the else branch, that means that we're in the this, in this situation when, where there's very little left of the source string. And now we're incrementing n still by chunk size, and that's not right. So we could do a number of things. We could change this assignment statement, move it into the then branch, and do something else in the, in the, in the else branch. But in fact, we can fix it. Um, right away by simply saying that we increment n not by chunk size, but by the number of characters that we're actually indeed, um, that we're indeed returning here, which is um, the length of, of s. Okay. okay, that takes care of that. Uh, but we get another complaint, which is here finally, that the, uh, the post condition, the one that we introduced um, at the beginning of the demo, might not hold. And again, we see that it's the else branch that has the problem. And in fact, when we s reflect on this, we actually see that it's the same problem that, we've, uh, that we faced before, um, that, uh, that we're out of the string and we're just returning something small. So here we could actually decide that either we would pad the string with blanks maybe, or repeat some portion of it, or um, something like that, or we cannot live up to this promise of returning something uh, whose length really is uh, chunk size. And I'm going to suggest that we change that specification here. So I'm going to change it to say that we return something whose length is no greater than, uh, than the chunk size. Now, generally, when you change the specification, you should be really scared because all of the callers in, in your program or callers of your library, what have you, um, might, now, uh, might now break because you've changed the specification of the call that they're, that they're making. But when you use specification, you can be less afraid of this because you have at least advertised uh, in a way that, that is checkable by tools, you've advertised what conditions are going to hold afterwards. So if you change one of those conditions, then when the callers again run the verifier, they will detect any, any problems resulting from that change in specification. Okay, and so with that, uh, we have now verified the entire program, passed all of the, um, all of the, the checks, making sure that we, um, that we don't dereference null, making sure that we pass all of the, the given preconditions, that we establish our own invariants and live up to our own post conditions. <laughs>then the implementation of the method can assume that the precondition holds just inside the, the, the method body. Just by the other way around, a postcondition is something that's supposed to hold at the end of the method, and it's something, therefore, that the, um, uh, that the implementation is responsible for and the caller can assume upon return. The object invariant is a kind of specification that tells you something about the consistency of the data structure inside the class. So it's something that, that one uses to write down what the what the validity condition is, that is the consistency condition is of the data structure inside the class. This has been Verification Corner. I'm Rustin Leno. Program safe. Verification Corner.